Hello food fans, today we're going to have pizza. We love pizza. Pizza is good. Pizza is the health food for healthy people. Maybe, maybe not. But this is the Rising Crust. The Rising Crust. Sounds like a good movie title. Rising Crust. Pizza 27 and a half ounces. And this is a bargain price uh, at Aldi's. I found this one for four dollars and nine cents. And 27 and a half ounces is a big pizza. Two slices of this pizza makes a good meal. When I say slices, I cut the pizza into four slices. So two slices would be half of a pizza. That's a good meal. I'm going to add a salad and a secret dessert. So let's get started. And the pizza is ready and I have mine always cooked a little bit uh, longer than what most people would have their pizza cooked and the pizza is still quite warm uh, out of the oven just a few minutes ago keep the kids away from the oven and uh, let them have some pizza though pizza's good pizza is one of my favorite foods don't know if it's good for a person or not depends I guess on what your particular physical condition is but if you enjoy pizza as much as I do this probably is good for your personality if nothing else so the, I'll take a test taste of the pizza it's still quite warm and I hope that uh, this is as good as I remember it being this is Mama Cozy's uh, pepperoni pizza It is delicious, but then pizza is delicious. I don't like the thin crust pizzas. Let me rephrase that. They're okay, <clears throat> but I prefer a thick crust, and I prefer a rising crust. Mmm. Very good. I'll have some show business uh, conversation here in a minute or two, but first I'll mix up my salad. This is my everyday salad. Cabbage, carrots, tomatoes, mayonnaise, relish, and ketchup. And I mix it uh, to where it's a nice colorful little thing that you can take a picture of and put on the wall and everybody would say, wow, it's a colorful salad. Not everybody would say that. Somebody would. I just did. So let's get some cabbage here. And we'll try to get carrots and tomatoes and cabbage all in one bite here. Tomato's going to hang on. Very, very good jolly, very, very good jolly, very, very good jolly, very, very good jolly, very, very good jolly. Check the um, salad ingredients sometimes to see what the um, healthful uh, tips are. Is this a good salad for you, for the uh, vitamins that you might want or need or like or the taste that you like? Cabbage will keep in the refrigerator for a couple of weeks at least. Keep it in a plastic bag. More salad. Tell you some things about some show business people I've worked with. I have here. A list of lots of names. 
the people I just jotted down. These are some of the people I worked with or saw in person or had a conversation with or something. Like Rock Hudson, I worked with him on Star Maker. Also worked with him on Devlin Connection and Dynasty. Had one long conversation with him. He and I arrived at the uh, set, the location for Star Maker about the same time. The only other people there is a assistant director and the catering truck. And we went to the catering table and we each had a cup of coffee and we were chatting and we talked about how we had grown up at a time when people arriving for work would get there at the time if, if it was 8 o'clock a.m. you're supposed to be at work people got to work by 7.59 so they could clock in if necessary but uh, it's gotten pretty much to the point where people don't really show up on time or even just a little bit late they usually have an excuse or so much traffic salad Rock Cutson was a very pleasant, nice person. He had a great voice, just his conversational voice. That's what you hear in the movies. That's really the way he talks. He, he was always pleasant when I was around him. Um, I got to work with him about five different days of uh, my movie career life. Lana Turner. Lana Turner was a beautiful lady. She'd been in movies for a long time. She was a great actress. She'd received Academy Award nominations. I think she won the Academy Award for Madame X. I'm not sure. I danced with her in Falcon Crest. <clears throat> I was standing in for Mel Ferrara, who was directing the episodes of Falcon Crest. And he had a scene where he's dancing with Lana Turner and he was directing and he wanted to see what it looked like when he was dancing with Lana Turner should he go to his left his right and so on so he had me dance in his place with Lana Turner and they would sometimes reset the camera so Lana Turner and I could just chat and Lana Turner one of the things she said she leaned on my shoulder said, I hope you don't mind if I lean on you to take off my shoes. She took off her shoes and she was a little bit shorter, of course, with the high heels off. She said, I hate wearing the high heels. They hurt my feet, but they make my legs look so good. And she might have said, they make a lady's legs look so good. Liz Taylor worked with on uh, There Must Be a Pony. Never was close to her at all. Never did have a conversation with her or make eye contact or anything. She was very beautiful. Let me get some of my root beer. Got over there. Root beer comes from Kroger, the pizza came from Aldi's. The salad, I think all came from uh, Kroger. Root beer has a delicious flavor. more pizza. Mickey Rooney, I worked with him on two TV movies. I don't remember the name of either one. Leave Him Laughing was one of them. 
but um, Mickey Rooney was a delight to talk with. On the set, before we started shooting, Mickey Rooney went up to each person on the set, the crew, the cast, the extras. He came up to me and said, hello, he extended his hand for a handshake, I shook hands with him, he says, hello, I'm Mick. And I said, I'm Tom, and he says, hi Tom, we talked for a half a minute or so and he went on to the next person. And anytime I talk with a celebrity I usually just talk about the weather or traffic or everyday things. Never would I get involved in politics or religion or any serious conversation with someone when they're getting ready to do a scene. After I worked the first movie with Mick and then worked with him a second time, <clears throat> we got to where we are at least on a first name basis. And later I saw him at one of the autograph shows. I used to go to the autograph shows to get autographs. And if anyone wanted one, I'd give them an autograph. But this was 1980s. I was not. Uh, known. There was no YouTube then. And uh, I saw Mick at the uh, autograph show and I helped him set up his table and his booth and had a picture taken with him. Most of the celebrities that I've worked with have been just very, very nice people. After Mickey Rooney, what have we got here? Ricardo Montalbán, very, very pleasant, nice man. He had an accident, I think it was the year it was 1950, he was working on a movie called uh, Across the Wide Missouri, I think, uh, something like that, and he had an accident falling from a horse. I think he was supposed to be riding a horse across a river and something happened. He had an accident. He was in pain for the rest of his life, but he was always pleasant on the set. Very nice man. Possibly the nicest gentleman I've ever met. John Houston directed Annie. I worked on Annie for three days. The, we, we worked back a lot at Universal even though the picture was it was either Columbia or Warner Brothers. But we worked at Universal on the scene using the New York Street set at Universal. And it was over 100 degrees Fahrenheit when we were working. The second day of the three-day job, the second and third days, I brought my guitar to the, to the set because uh, it was uh, a nice set where when they were setting up cameras, we could make some music and people seemed to enjoy it. And John Houston came over to where myself and two other gentlemen were playing some music and singing. And John Houston said, nice music, fellas. He was on oxygen at the time, and he was a um, pleasant person. I enjoyed working. <coughs> I enjoyed working on Annie. And one of the people who happened to walk by the set one of the people who happened to walk by that day was Frank Stallone, who was Sylvester Stallone's brother, and he played guitar and sang some songs there on the set of Annie. 
who played my old guitar. Right near the end of the uh, salad here. I recommend getting a uh, salad at least every day if you can. I do believe vegetables are good for you. I recommend pizza for the taste and this Mama Cozy's pizza for $4.09. That's a bargain. And I don't get paid anything to say anything about anything. I don't have any contracts with my channel where I'm promoting some product. I, there will be advertisements uh, at different times during the video. An advertisement will interrupt whatever's going on. But I have no arrangements, no uh, contracts with any organization or company or brand name, whatever. Who do I have next year on my list? Roy. Oh, Madonna. I can't read my own writing. I worked with Madonna in 1984. I was going to the craft services table, <clears throat> which is the snack table, during a break in the filming. And as I was walking toward it, Madonna was walking toward it. And she said, hello. And we had a very brief two or three sentence um, conversation. She was very pleasant. And she obviously is quite talented. Something else I wanted to mention, I'll get back to the list of names here. But since this is a new year, 2023, <clears throat> For all of you musicians out there, there are a lot of songs that became public domain songs during the change from, from 2022 to 2023. Uh, new songs have now become public domain. That means you own the song. You can sing it and do your own version of it, and you don't have to pay a publisher. One of the songs that, uh, well, let me give you a list of here, three or four songs that have gone into the public domain from the uh, change of uh, going from one year to another. Songs like, and what does my handwriting say? You scream, I scream, we all scream for ice cream. Uh, that's public domain now, you can do that. Blue skies, blue skies, smiling at me, nothing but blue skies, do I see? Blue days, all of them gone, nothing but blue skies from now on. Then uh, Me and My Shadow, that's uh, not only a good song, there's a good dancing routine that goes with Me and My Shadow. In fact, some of you out there I know some people who could do some good versions of Me and My Shadow and it's free to use that song. You don't have to have any arrangement for someone to take part of the royalties of your video. Mm. I'll give you a couple other song titles here. Old Man River. Old Man River. That Old Man River. Keeps on rolling along. You and me, we sweat and strain. Bodies all ache and racked with pain. Tote that barge, tote that bale. Get a little drunk and you land in jail. Um, My Blue Heaven. I recommend Fats Domino's version of My Blue Heaven. He had a big hit with it back in either 1955 or 1956. 
and if you listen to Fats Domino's version of My Blue Heaven, listen to, say, about the first 30 or 40 seconds of it, and then lift the needle, uh, move the uh, playing spot to about two and a half minutes into the song. The song changes tempo, it gets faster and faster as it goes along. Fats Donald has a very good version of My Blue Heaven, million seller for him. Gene Austin had a big hit with it many years ago. But uh, I think you'd like that song. I might do a version of that sometime. Public domain songs you can put on your YouTube videos. The, if you want to do 20 songs, if they're all public domain, you can do them all. And nobody's going to claim it. Or if they do claim it, just uh, check, make sure it is public domain, and challenge any claims anybody makes. Choo-choo train. Almost done with the first slice of pizza. Done with the salad. Sylvester Stallone I worked with on uh, it was either Rocky Three or Rocky Four. It was one with Dolph Lundgren. And uh, I was supposedly a Russian doctor or scientist of some sort. Uh, they're trying to make a superhero out of Dolph Lundgren and the, the Russian uh, team that works with uh, the fighters and they're going to try to beat the champ. So they're measuring everything on uh, different measuring devices. What is this one? Uh, boy, it is hard to read my writing. Uh, Clint Eastwood. He liked my car. Worked with him on Heartbreak Ridge and he says, who owns the Rambler? I do. My car's got personality. Put it up here in front. And in one scene in um, Heartbreak Ridge, my car has a very prominent spot, and Clint Eastwood runs past it trying to catch a bus. Clint Eastwood is a pleasant person to work with. to my writing after I walked away from it. Why does it get so messed up? Smothers Brothers. Worked with Smothers Brothers on the uh, People's Choice Awards in 1988-89. Never did talk with the, the, the Smothers. <coughs> I never did talk with the Smothers Brothers. They were emceeing part of the show. Who else did I work with here? For country music fans, I worked with Hank Thompson one time on one show with Cliffy Stone got to perform on the same stage as Hank Thompson was performing on. And he was probably taller than me. William Shatner was always fun to work with. 
uh, probably have told the story before, but uh, he had a scene where he had to drive a car down the street and slam on the brakes and turn it, turn the wheels such a way that the car slides sideways right up against the curb, like he parks it sideways. And he did the scene, and it looked spectacular. He comes driving toward, I, I was standing on some church steps, then there's a church scene. Marjo Gartner, is that his name, was a guest star, and had some kind of re religious church thing form. Uh, the show had something to do with uh, Marjo being, I think he was supposed to be a bad guy. Anyway, I'm standing on some church steps and some other people are around doing whatever we were doing. And William Shatner comes driving toward the front of the church and it turns the car sideways and slides into place. And um, he starts to get out of the car and the direction is uh, back to one once again. And Bill Shatner says, hey, I, I did that perfectly. I did everything exactly right. Uh, I turned the car and made it slide in just exactly right. Why are we doing it again? And Drex says, this time, Bill, don't laugh. Because when he slid in, the sound of his laughter mixed with these brakes, or the tire squealing just didn't work. But Bill Shatner was always nice to me, and the guy worked in everything. It's almost impossible to walk down on Hollywood Boulevard or anywhere in Southern California where there's a movie set without bumping into um, Bill, Bill Shatner. Ed Asner worked with him on Lou Grant. He was the um, president of Screen Actors Guild for a while, so I saw him every time I went to the meetings. And again, he was a nice person. I didn't have any big conversations with him, just, hello, how you doing? If I'd work on the show and he recognized me from before, he would say hi or I would say hi. He was quite funny on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Kirk Douglas, I worked with Kirk Douglas and Burt Lancaster on Tough Guys. Worked at City Hall, Los Angeles. I was nowhere near them. I could see them doing their scene, but I was 50 feet away as a pedestrian, and they were doing something on the lawn area, and I was walking by, or I might have been sitting on a park bench. I don't remember exactly what I did. Worked with Oprah on uh, the People's Choice Award show. I did not have any conversation with her. I was never within 20 feet of her, just she was there in the audience. I was on stage dancing and singing and talking. I have a video at YouTube of the uh, opening sequence of the uh, People's Choice Awards show. So if you want to see what I look like singing and dancing and talking, check out the People's Choice Awards feature man. Um, 
Lyle Alzado and John Matusak, two football players, both passed away too young. I worked with each one of them at least two times. I worked with, uh, I think his name is uh, not Robert Q. Lewis, but uh, a DJ in Los Angeles. Robert Morgan, Robert W. Morgan, and he had a funny show, and he did a parody of the Super Bowl. He got some team of, I don't know what they were, and put on a sporting event, and I was the halftime entertainment with my MIDI piano and a microphone or an amplifier. That was fun. Robert W. Morgan had a morning show. I don't know if it was KLAC or K... I don't know what it was. It might have been KFWB. My memory is not remembering everything. Hmm. Is this? Oh, Andre the Giant. Easily the biggest person I've ever worked with. One of his hands would be as wide as two of my hands. Pleasant guy, soft spoken. Worked with him on Mickey and Maud, a t uh, movie. some root beer. First time I saw Andre the Giant, I was standing on one side of the street, uh, sort of like the street you would see in a suburb somewhere. Not not real wide streets, but enough room for cars to go in both directions and people could park their cars close to the curb. <clears throat> and I was across the street from the catering truck and I looked out at the catering truck and there was Andre and from far away I could tell he was a big, big, big man. He was holding his coffee cup and it looked like he was drinking out of a tiny cup, but it was a regular sized coffee cup. He was just a big, big man. He, he did well as a wrestler for a while. Oh, Debbie Allen. She was nice. She worked on Fame. She was a director, she was a dancer, she was a choreographer. I think she won a Tony. Uh, she won some awards, I know. I saw her about six months after I worked with her on Fame. She came up to me and said, hello, Tom. She remembered names. She was a person who knew people forever. Very talented, very pretty, very, very nice. If you're not in show business, you're missing out on meeting some wonderful people. Adrian Lyon, I'm not sure of the spelling. 
I worked with Adrian Lyon for probably about a week on flash dance, and I was watching what was going on, trying to figure out how this was going to be a big movie. And I talked with several people on the set, and we were all kind of confused. We were in Mulberry's bar, the scene where the dancer gets doused with a big bucket of water. She's on stage and they dump water on her and she's dancing. And it didn't make much sense. And I was thinking, uh, this movie isn't going to go very far. This is not going to be a hit. And it became a big, big hit. It brought in more than $100 million at the box office at a time when $100 million just seemed like a lot of money. Adrian Lyon was the director of Flashdance. He was right. He he knew what he was doing. He was not following trends. He was setting trends. And that's where breakdancing got his big promotion. It became popular because of Flashdance. I don't think I ever talked with Adrian Lyon. I talked with the choreographer on the, on the uh, movie. Don't remember his name offhand, but he went on to be a director, I think, of his own movie, Chorus Line. He either directed it or choreographed it. He and he, the choreographer before he worked on Flash Dance a few months before that. He was, he was thinking of um, giving up on show business. He was making a living by selling sunglasses under a freeway overpass. My memories of uh, Flash Dance was a nice show to work. A lot of nice people on the set. And when I saw the movie, I realized it was much better than what I was imagining when I was working on it. But it had to be put together. I saw it in pieces. One more root beer here. I think something has changed in the formula for the plastic two-liter bottles. The caps don't quite fit the way they used to. The pizza is all gone. Well, I should say the two pieces of pizza are gone. Now, it's time for the secret dessert. The secret dessert is chocolate pudding. And this chocolate pudding, this size of chocolate pudding, is a nice dessert. And a nice size dessert. This cost 25 cents at Aldi. They had uh, They had the pudding in stock. Usually they're out of the pudding. But this uh, particular time I was in there, they had the pudding, 99 cents for four, so 25 cents each. 
And I'll try the pudding. See how good it is. It's chocolate pudding. Mmm. It is so good. Weather in Tennessee is uh, a little bit too cold for me. But it will get colder, I'm sure, before it gets warmer. Mmm. It's down a couple of degrees above freezing at night to a couple of degrees below freezing. More pudding. Thank you for coming over and sharing lunch with me. Always good to see you. We'll have to do this again sometime. Thank you for watching.